Hey there, all my friends, how are you doing? This is Dawn with Painted Willow Art, and I have got a paint along for you today. We are going to create a background, and I know it's kind of hard to see on this one because I already drew on top of it, but we're going to use watercolor to create um, kind of a, an almost tie-dyed maybe look to the background. So it'll be something like this, and I'll, I'll show you one in a minute that doesn't have drawing on top of it already. Um, these are really fun backgrounds to use in scrapbooking, in art journaling. You could doodle on top of them and, and make pictures like that. They're very versatile. So today what we're gonna use to do this is a piece of watercolor paper. This is, I think, a piece of Arches 140 pound watercolor, cold press watercolor paper. For the board that I'm gonna tape it to, I've just got an old canvas uh, board seems I do more more taping of watercolor to the back of these than actually painting with acrylics on the front anymore. Um, it's got canvas texture on the front that tape doesn't stick to real well, so I'm going to flip it over the back and I'm going to tape my watercolor paper to that. Um, if you've watched any of my paint-alongs at all, you know that sometimes I tape the paper down sometimes I do not I am going to tape it down with this one because we're going to use a good bit of water to get um, to get the design that we're going for so I'm going to take and just tape this down real quick make sure it's pressed down real good because we are going to use a good bit of water the fun part about taping these down is that it gives you a little bit of a border when you're done as well. So it's almost uh, like a ready-made frame looking kind of thing. I'm not measuring real carefully where I'm putting my tape, so my border might be a little bit wonky when I'm done, but for showing you how to do this, that is perfectly fine. So we'll make sure we've got that pressed down good. Um, I'm going to use two different brushes for this. I've got a fairly wide flat brush that I'm going to use to do the water wash. Then I've got a round brush that I use to put my paint down. I don't know that it matters too terribly much what kind of brush you use to put your paint down. You're going to kind of match it to your surface. I've got a fairly large surface. This is a, I think it's a half of an 11 by 14 sheet. So I'm going to use a number 12 round brush, but you can use pretty much whatever brush you want to do this because we're not doing any really detailed painting. We're just going to kind of be splopping color around. So I've got those, I've got my water, and you can use any watercolor paint for this, but today um, I'm going to use some liquid watercolors. I just got these in a couple weeks ago and they're really, really vibrant and I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite enjoying playing with them. So we're going to use these today and see how they turn out. They are liquid. So rather than dipping my brush in the bottle, I've got a little palette that I'm going to squeeze them out onto. They're, they're kind of nice because they've got a dropper included in the bottle so you can just drop however much paint you want in there. The other thing we're going to need to do this is some plastic wrap. Whatever kind of plastic wrap you have is fine. Name brand, generic, doesn't matter, but we're going to need a little bit of plastic wrap, so keep that handy as well. So to start this, I'm going to do just a water wash across the whole page. So all I'm doing is getting the entire page wet. And I am going to use a good bit of water. In prior videos, I have told you that it doesn't need to be sopping wet that we're just kind of going for that shiny sheen across the top of the paper. So when you achieve that kind of shiny sheen there, put a little bit more water on. And the reason we're doing this, we want this to be a little wetter than maybe we normally would, because what we're ultimately gonna do is drop that paint onto the water and let the paint start dispersing out like it does on wet paper. And we're gonna put the plastic wrap on top and we want the plastic wrap to kind of mingle with the paint and pick up the paint in places and move the paint around in places. So if the paper is a little bit wetter, we're going to get a little bit better um, interaction between the plastic and the paint. 
So I'm good and wet there. I am going to take and drop some paint on my palette. So we've got the little dropper. I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna use a little bit of blue and I'm gonna use a little bit of purple. The colors you use are completely up to you. I would just make sure that they're colors that are gonna blend nicely and not make mud. Um, yellow and purple often together make brown, so I'm gonna try and keep the yellows and the blues together and the yellow away from the purple. So to do this, I'm just gonna wet my brush a little bit to start with. And I am going to use my blue first. Doesn't make any difference what color you start with. And I'm just kind of splopping it around, wiping it around. There really is no rhyme or reason to this. We are going for completely random here. I'm gonna rinse my brush off and grab some yellow and come back in with the yellow and do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of splop it around and you'll notice where the yellow and the blue meet, we get green. So even with just using a couple of colors, you can sometimes get four or five different colors depending on how you mix them together, where you put them next to each other. You'll notice, I don't know if you can tell on camera, I've got some bubbles on here because I'm doing this fairly fast. So it's making a little bit of bubble action on the page. I really don't care if the bubbles are there or not because ultimately the plastic wrap is going to um, do away with the bubbles. And now that I see this down, I'm not liking that dark as much as I thought I would. Actually, it looks better on the camera than it does on my paper. Um, so I think maybe we'll put just a little more dark there and I'm going to put some more of the lighter on there. So this is really just whatever looks good to your eye. We're not going for any particular pattern. You're just kind of swapping paint around, keeping it wet. If you need to dip your brush in, in between to make sure it's wet, go ahead. Once you've got all your paint down, you are going to tear off a piece of plastic wrap bigger than your paper because what we're going to do is take this plastic wrap, put it on here, and then we're going to kind of smunch it around. And I don't know if you can see what's happening here. When I'm smunching the plastic wrap around, it's making wrinkles in the plastic wrap, and it's actually picking up and moving paint. So we're going to do that kind of on the whole thing. Make sure that plastic's covering everything and just kind of smunch it around a little bit. Um, the way I've got this down now, all my lines are kind of going the same, same direction. If you don't like that, just, you know, do things like this. Take your fingers and move, move the plastic wrap around. You can swirl it. You can make it all look like it's whirlpooling, whatever you do. So you're just going to take that plastic wrap and kind of scrunch it around, make it how you want it. I do have a little bit down here in this corner that dried out a little bit. So the plastic wrap's not really sticking to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little more water, a little more paint, and then put the plastic wrap back down and sponge it. So if you've got areas that have dried on you and it doesn't look like the plastic wrap is really sticking and, and doing anything, put a little more paint, a little more water, and then put the plastic wrap back down. So this is what I've got. And I'm gonna set that and leave that to dry. I'm not gonna touch this for a few hours at least. How long it takes to dry completely depends on the environmental conditions around you right now. In the house with the air conditioner on, if you're somewhere where it's hot and summery, um, it might take five or six hours to dry. I had this drying out in my studio and I don't leave the air conditioning on in my studio when I'm not out here. So um, the sample one that I'm gonna show you here in a minute, I, I did about two hours ago, left it out here where it's a little warmer. I think it's about 80 degrees out here right now. And it dried in two hours. So um, you just kind of have to check back on it. And the way you do that is just gently, you know, kind of peel a corner up and see what it looks like. If it looks like, I'm not sure you can see it on camera, but you, the paint I can tell is still liquid. It's moving as I move the plastic wrap. Then I know that's not dry. So I'm gonna just put it back down and I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. Um, I think all of the projects that I've done for these paint along videos so far, I have used a blow dryer or a heat gun at some point to dry them so we can continue and move on. That doesn't work with this because the plastic wrap on top limits the airflow and it's the airflow from a, a blow dryer or a heat gun that actually makes it dry. So that plastic wrap's not gonna let any air get to it. So it's not gonna dry with one of those. So this is one of those projects where you just 
set it aside, and let it dry. I have one that I did earlier today that we'll finish up with. So when this one was dry, all I did was just pull the plastic wrap off. Um, this one, you can see these lines here is where the plastic wrap was scrunched up. This one doesn't have a lot of lines and scrunching on it because of the plastic that I used. I had um, actually peeled the plastic off of this canvas board. It was a new canvas board. So I could use it for this. And that plastic was a little bit heavier than normal like plastic wrap or saran wrap. So when I put it down, that plastic wrap didn't want to stay attached to the paper and the wet paint because it was a little bit heavier. It kind of wanted to do its own thing. So it lifted off a bit and what it left me was something, um, it's kind of softer than what we're gonna have on that other one. So you can try experimenting with different types of plastic. I wouldn't use anything too terribly heavy, but sometimes the plastic that things come wrapped in, you can use for this. So you get a little bit of a, a reuse and reuse out of your plastic. But this is the kind of thing you're gonna get out of it. Um, where the colors bled together, you get nice blending of the colors. And then where the plastic wrap was on top, you get lines and places where it lifted some of the paint back off. So you get a whole lot of interesting design on this. So I'm gonna peel the tape off of this one just so you can see what it looks like finished. So there we go. And you can see that tape made kind of a nice border around it so it gives it a finished look. So what do I do with this now? Well, like I mentioned at the beginning, you can do pretty much anything you want with these. You can use these as backgrounds for scrapbooking pages. You can cut it apart in random shapes and use it in collage projects. You can, um... yep, just lost my train of thought. How about that? Don't you just hate when that happens? <laughs> um, these are fun to put in picture frames behind a picture of somebody. So if you've got maybe some family photos or pictures of somebody that you're gonna give as a gift, you can put these in the, put something like this in the frame as a background and put the picture on top of it. So that, you know, if you've got like maybe a five by seven picture on something this size, you get a little bit of that border around it and it's real colorful and fun. The other thing you can do on these, which is one of my favorite things, is to doodle on it. Like this one has some Zentangle doodles on top of it. So you can do that same kind of thing with these. Let me grab a pen here real quick. So on this one, I might want to do something like an abstract mandala, simply because I like those. So I'm just going to add Essentially lines and doodles. I'm just doing it with a Sharpie. You can do it with with whatever black pen you want um, If I were to do that on this one, I'd probably use a white pen because the colors are going to be darker on this um, And you just you know kind of go to town Doodle around do whatever you want to do on it. I'm not going to film the entire drawing process. I don't think Just because I don't want this video to be terribly long. I like them to be fairly short so that you can try these things in a fairly quick amount of time and not have, um, you know, not feel like it's taking days and days and days. So I will show you the finished one at the end when I'm done. And at the end of the video, I will also put a picture of the blue and green and purple one once it's dry so you can see what that one ended up looking like. So these have lots of uses in, in a variety of different arts and crafts projects. And what I would also like you to see is how vibrant those colors are. Those are the liquid watercolors as well. I used the same yellow that I used for this one, but I used orange and red instead of blue and purple. And you can see with fairly little bit of watercolor, you saw how much I used on that other one. There, I, I didn't use a ton. There was just a little like maybe a half a dropper full of each on the palette, even with a very little amount of paint, those liquid watercolors stay nice and vibrant, um, which I just love about them. 
If you are going to use this in another project where you're going to be adding some other kind of liquid medium to it, like um, if you're using it in a scrapbook project or a collage project where you might be using um, a decoupage medium or matte gel medium, something like that that's a, a kind of a liquidy glue to stick it to something else, these liquid watercolors do reactivate fairly easily. And what do I mean by reactivate? I mean, when you get them wet, the colors lift and run and act like watercolors again. So if you're gonna use this in a way that you're gonna have another liquid medium on it at all, even though glue dries while you're blush brushing that glue on wet, it's gonna reactivate the paint. So I would take these and spray something like a, um, a UV protectant spray across it real quick. It's just a real light coating that's going to fix the paint to the paper so that when you do use it in other projects, that paint's not gonna reactivate. And I would also suggest, if you're intending to use these on other projects, um, maybe make two of them. The one you're gonna use for the project and a test one so that you can spray your UV spray on it. And then use the glue that you're gonna use and see how it works. Ooh, my Sharpie's shedding. Wait. Um, use the glue that you're going to use and see how it works and make sure that your paint's not going to reactivate and you're not going to end up smearing color all over the rest of your project as you're wiping the glue on this. So there you go. That's a fun, easy, kind of tie-dye looking background that you can do with watercolor fairly quickly and easily lots of different uses and if you're interested in learning how to do mandalas you can see that one is not um, it's not very symmetrical it's kind of wonky I teach a class on drawing abstract mandalas so if you happen to be somebody who really likes the look of a mandala and the idea of using something like that meditationally um, I have a class where I show you how to do that but we give ourselves permission for them to not be completely symmetrical, to be a little bit wonky and fun. And honestly, I, I really kind of like the way some of those abstract ones come out looking. So I do have a class on that. If you're interested, you can check on my website under the classes link. Um, I think there's two mandala classes scheduled in August of this year. And then, you know, I schedule those out a month ahead. So there will be more as well. And there you go. So if you have enjoyed this, you can hit the subscribe button. You'll get notified whenever I do a new paint along video. You can add yourself to my email list on my website if you want to get notified of upcoming classes and other fun things. And if you try this method for creating a background, I would love to see what you create. Um, please tag me on social media if you post them or you're welcome to message them to me or email them to me as well. Um, just because I, I think they turn out kind of cool and I like to see what everybody creates. So. There you go. If you give it a try, let me know how you do. And if you have any questions, also email those or message those to me on social media. I'm happy to answer whatever I can for you. Happy painting, everybody.